Go do things. The Dead Animals of Hollywood. Well, we're all ready to shoot it. Now, Al, you know what to do. You're doubling the bandits, so just speed this truck down the road. And when you get to the marker, we'll set off the explosion. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I, I think I can handle it all right. Yeah, that truck's going to do a couple of flips, I'll so watch your step now. Be careful. Sure, sure I will. Don't worry about me. That's the boy. Okay, everybody, this is the take. Quiet, please. Okay, I'll get started and take it off. All right, hold on. Get ready with that switch, men. It's almost on the marker. Yeah. Let it go! From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring, unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions. Whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth. The Suicide Squad. The movie stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, we are privileged to have as our guest one of the most daring stuntmen of Hollywood, Mr. Yakima Canut. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are his own actual experiences. Yakima Canut is here in the studio right now, and later in the program we will bring him to the microphone. But first... Let us learn something of his everyday job. It is the day in early spring, just a few years ago. The scene is an executive office in the mascot motion picture studios in North Hollywood. Seated at a desk and nervously puffing a cigar as he scans the papers before him, sits a tall, middle-aged man. He leans forward, flicks a switch on his autophone, and sits waiting for an answer. Yes, Mr. Abbott. Send Davis from the production department in here. Yes, sir, right away. Ah, this business of producing pictures. It's enough to drive a man crazy. Ah. Come in. You want to see me, Mr. Roberts? Yeah, yeah, sit down, Davis. There's something in this script that I want you to help me with. These writers seem to think we can get by with murder. Why, what's the trouble? Well, this automobile spill crash here in the story. My man, that car is supposed to run off a cliff 300 feet high. We can't use a dummy on account of the close-up shot. Well, why not use a stuntman? Well, I don't think we could get even a stuntman to do that. It's suicide. I wouldn't do it for a million dollars. Well, don't worry. I think I know a man who'll do it. Hmm? And he won't charge a million dollars either. Well, for the love of Mike, get him. And so it was that another routine call to Yakima Canuck brought him into one of the most difficult situations of his long and dangerous career, a situation that almost cost his life. It is now Tuesday morning. The beautiful city of Hollywood nestles far down at the foot of the mountain on which we stand. The air is sharp and cold. Technicians are setting up gold and silver reflectors. Cameramen are busy with their apparatus. The highway has been blocked off for a mile and a half in each direction. Time for the big, thrilling scene is drawing near. Standing beside an old, dilapidated car is Yakima Kanat, giving the car a final checkup. The director walks over to him. Well, Yak, when we get that dolly track finished, we'll be ready to shoot. Well, it can't be too soon for me. This mountain air cuts like a knife. Now, you've got your safety devices figured out, haven't you? Yep, yep, I'm all set. Good. Had the boy stretch a little net down about 30 feet from the top of the cliff. Plan to leave this tub in midair and land in the net. Well, you won't have much time, you know. You'll have to get out of that car in a hurry. Yeah, I know. I took the door off the other side. It won't show in the camera, you know. I think I can make it all right. How fast are you going over? Well, I figure I'll be making about 25 when I get to the edge. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I wonder if there are any brakes on this heap. Well, you've got me there. Maybe George over there can tell you, though. He brought the thing out from town. Well, from the looks of this hell, brakes couldn't stop me anyway. Okay, Mr. Roberts, everything's ready. Well, that's fine. All right, I'll give you the signal to start, Jack. Take it away. Right. Mr. Roberts, I'd rather be an assistant director. <laughs> Even I'd be an assistant before I'd do that. <laughs> All right, you boys with the cameras, on your toes and keep grinding no matter what happens. Okay, everybody, we're going to take it. Here we go. Okay, Yak, come ahead. Camera! Hey, he's coming a little too fast. Yeah, that hill's steeper than it looks. Look, he's gaining speed every second. 
He must not have any break. Yeah, here he comes. He's almost to the edge. Keep grinding those cameras, men. There he goes. He's going over. Hey, look. Look, his pocket's caught on the door. Jump! Yeah, look out! Jump! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the courageous man who made that scene, whose business it is to make such scenes for motion pictures, Yakima Kanat, interviewed by Glenn Hardy. Well, Yak, that was a close shave. You certainly were in a tight place, weren't you? Yeah, I certainly was. When I started to jump, my coat pocket caught on the edge of the door opening. I had to work pretty fast, and, well, I just made it. Well, I guess luck was with you 100%. Now, although your profession is very dangerous, Jack. I'd say it's all so interesting. You you like it, don't you? Yep, I like it all right. You never know what the studio's going to ask you to do. Now tell me, Yak, you, you'll do any kind of a stunt, won't you? Yeah, almost. That is, any stunt except those with animals. Oh, you mean wild animals. Yeah, you know, bears, lions, and things like that. Yeah. You can never tell what they're going to do. <laughs> I suppose not. You run into some unusual situations, don't you? No, oh, there's a lot of things happen in this business. Some tragic, some funny, and sometimes a little annoying. Yes. Yeah. The gag goes through as it's planned, it's just routine. But sometimes things go wrong. Is that so? Yeah. I remember once on location in Montana when everything seemed to go wrong. I was playing the lead in this picture. Hal Roach was the producer. We had some Indians working there, and one of them was drinking pretty heavily a canned heat. I was oh, just to... a minute, Jack, please. We, we wouldn't miss that story for the world, but I'd like to interrupt right here for just a moment in order to hear a word from our sponsor. Okay, Yakima. Now, how about that Indian and the canned heat? Well, the story had to do with the devil horse. I'm supposed to ride this horse around the camp and scare all the Indians. They're afraid of this particular horse, you see. I see. Go ahead. Well, it's a night scene, and I'm riding this horse and carrying a flare in each hand. While they're getting ready to shoot, this Indian who was drinking the canned heat was getting into everybody's hair. He was even trying to get me to... You want fire water, huh? No, no, Joe, I don't want any. Well, him plenty good stuff. Him make him big kick in stomach. Well, I'll stick to my buttermilk, Joe. Uh, You no drink with me, huh? You no friend. Ah, uh, scram. Get out of here. You're getting on my nerves. Ah, uh, me get even. You no drink. Me get even. Well, Jack, we're ready for your scene. No use rehearsing. Just ride in fast and gallop around with those flares in your hands. Sure. Please. Sure, I know. It's a cent. Okay, everybody. This is the picture. Wait till everybody. Let them take your places. Quiet, please. Okay, Mr. Hart. All right. Action. Camera. Yeah, those players are going to photograph as well. Yeah, it's going to be a good scene. What was that? What happened? Hey, look. One of those players exploded right in his hand. Well, I think his clothes are on fire. No. No, but he must be badly burned. He's yeah. fallen off the horse. Uh-huh. Come on, let's get over there. Hey, what's that Indian doing to him? Hurry up now. Come on. Let's get over there. Oh, Miss Jack, him no drink with Big Eagle, huh? <coughs> Big Eagle fight. Play <coughs> you, I'll knock your block off. <coughs> What's this all about? Are oh, you hurt, Jack? Hey, what was Joe trying to do? Uh-huh. Kill you? I guess so. A dizzy wild man's gone crazy. So, yeah, you're badly burned. Come on, let's get you to the hospital. Hurry up, get on. Well, Jack, you certainly had your hands full there. Why do you suppose the flare exploded? Oh, they often do, you know. Flares get old and maybe crack. There have been a number of explosions with flares. Well, what was that Indian trying to do? Well, when he saw me on the ground, he tried to kill me. Hmm. <laughs> well, how do you account for the actions of the Indian? Oh, I uh, guess it was just the effects of the canned heat. <laughs> well, speaking of Indians, Jack, uh, more gentlemanly ones, of course. You're part Indian yourself, aren't you? Well, that's what everybody thinks, but it's a laugh. Well, that's so. <laughs> I'm really Scotch-Irish and Dutch. <laughs> I play a lot of Indian parts, though. Well, tell me, uh, how long have you been doing stunts for the movies? Oh, yars and yars and yars. <laughs> Going into <laughs> dialect, eh? Well, what did you do before you came to Hollywood? I was a rodeo performer. Well, if my memory serves me right, didn't you hold some championships? Yes, yes, it did. I held the all-around world championship from 1917 to 1924. Mm-hmm. The Bronx Riding Championship in 1917, 1919, 1923. Hey, that's a real record. 
Incidentally, where's your hometown? Colfax, Washington. Jack, I, I understand some of the stunt men are supposed to be superstitious. How about you? Well, I'm not exactly superstitious, but I can't see the sense of walking under a ladder or taking the third light <laughs> off a mat. <laughs> well, I've heard that there have been quite a number of fatalities in your profession. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. But most of them have been suffered by men who weren't qualified for stunt work. Well, you mean fellows who were not real stuntmen. That's right. Once in a while, a man will drift in, need some quick money, and he's willing to take a long chance. And that's usually the end for him. Well, uh, tell me, Yak, just before you do one of these dangerous stunts, there must be a little tension. Yeah, yes, there is. It isn't fear, it's, well... Just the hope that everything will go off smoothly. I see. Well, Yakima, you certainly have some interesting stories to tell. And on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you sincerely for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in the hope that we may have you on this program again very soon. Thank you again, old boy, and good luck.